plants. I'm trying to build the no barker. Now what exactly is that? It's kind of what it sounds like. It means no barking, right? Taking a normal dog collar, or what appears to be normal, right? Well, wrong. Only because this little dog collar is basically set up with little teeny boards like this. And this one, actually, one of the vibrators we're using in the prototype, hopefully surrounded in the collar. Now, why are we doing that? A vibrator instead of a big box with bulky batteries to shock our dog. It's inhumane! It is totally inhumane, and I can't stand for it. My dogs lately have been barking more and more and more, especially parties as summer's coming. Those dogs want to bark. Problem is, I'm getting knocks on my door, hearing yelling outside, and you know what? I'm not sleeping very good. So I had to build something, well, really for me. Um, and the good news is, we're here. We got a prototype, it works, but we need to shrink it. We need to shrink it to be very, very teeny. Perhaps not this small, but small enough that it's in line within the collar, right? And the reason for that is we don't want our dog to feel like our collar is heavier than it has to be. Now this one's a little elaborate, and this is not what you're gonna get. You're gonna just get a plain black or pink uh, collar, depending on what your uh, preference is. The idea behind this is, again, not to shock our dogs, but to shock them in the sense like, hey, what is that, right? And the way we're doing this is a built-in microphone. Ideally, if we could do it, we'll put two. But right now, we're just using one microphone and detecting one, how close is that bark? Because there's other dogs, and maybe you have other dogs, but we don't want our dog to be reprimanded for some other dog, right? So taking in that wavelength, we detect how close that bark is. But beyond just that, we're also taking in that wavelength and seeing the pitch to see if, is it a dog? Is it somebody yelling? And things like that, besides actually seeing the levels of the length of the wavelength coming in, we can tell, and thanks to MIT, I stole their data a little bit, to work for me a little, um, to basically be able to send little vibrations into the collar, right? So with teeny vibrators aligning uh, our collar here, we're basically telling our dog, hey, you're doing something wrong. And how do they know? Because we're kind of training them. As they're barking, the more vibration occurs. Vibrate, 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 and the longer it goes, obviously, the more intense it becomes. But not so intense like a shock collar where, you know, that's totally inhumane. This sucker, well, guess what? Only uses a 3.3 volt battery. That's only 3.3 volts of power, right? That's likely less than a hearing aid, if I'm not mistaken, into a collar. Now, why do I need to basically get funding? The reason being is we need to make it small enough light enough and uh, a little bit faster really uh, to be in one of these colors and the reason being is again we don't want to hurt our dogs we don't want to put something heavy on our dogs we want it just like a normal collar something that they love that we attach a leash to if they're lucky and go walk them now you might be saying well every dog's different yes and that's true and that's why right now we're using Bluetooth. Now this chip is too big. It is on here, but the fact is it is too big. And that's another reason why we need to shrink this. The good news is, let's say you have a small, medium, or large dog, our app, or you could go to the website, will allow you to, with the slider, choose what dog you have. And also if other people online, hopefully, uh, will also tell you what's the best levels for your dog. So you maybe have a bull massive, right? You don't want to put a chihuahua strength, right? So help, having the community come together for this, I think is going to be great. Um, the best part is it will be completely open source. Why? Well, why should your collar be closed? You want to change something? It's going to have an API. You maybe perhaps want to use this for other reasons, like training your dog. Instead of necessarily using treats and throwing them at your dog, maybe perhaps vibration. So if they're going to... It may sound bad, but smell their poop or almost eat it if you have a Shih Tzu, no pun intended, and I've had this happen, you send little vibrations. And because you perhaps made the app or you download it from the community, you can send that vibration to prevent your dog from doing it. And because it is open, you can make add-ons to it, right? You could also add on to see what the temperature is outside. So if it's too hot out, well, maybe you vibrate the dog to come back in. 
Ideally, that's not likely. However, maybe that's the next thing. But truthfully, this way you know if your dog's inside or outside. Maybe you're not home. You could tell somebody, hey, can you bring in my dog? It's 112 outside. And being in Las Vegas, that's something that could really happen here. So what do I need from you guys? Well, the thing is, I do have a working prototype. Problem is, it's not so small. And as you see it, if you really look in here, our prototype, and it's not pretty. And that's exactly why I need your help. But right now, as you see, we have the light on here. Um, and basically what we're doing with that, there you go for the lighting. Um, and there you see, we have it set up. We have our little microphone. We have our battery in there. And basically what we're doing here is with the little vibrators, just like this on these little boards, go around the whole collar here so that we can help control our dogs better. So three in the morning, I don't get a phone call, wake up, or maybe I'm too used to my dog. This way it controls my dog for me. So having BLE 4.0 in the collar, we could shrink it so, so teeny. And not only that, instead of these big LEDs, I can shrink it to an LED like this that is our, actually an RGB. Now, why do we want that? So one, we know how's the power level. Second, if we're training our dog, it will turn blue. Why? So we know when we're sending vibration. And green, obviously, tell us the power. But and then you also have red to say, hey, you never set this up. So with the RGB, little in this case, it's a little teeny sequin. And it does have a little chip. And the best news, uses hardly any power. So it would be great for our collar. So if you need something to, well, control your dog, this might be it. Um, I really hope you'll help me. Uh, and if so, I hope it's because you need it or you're a trainer and you see the logic by not having those hideous sound uh, fences. Do we really know how safe those are? Maybe. And not only that, we're not shocking the heck out of our dogs with a terrible, terrible shock collar. We're using a teeny battery that will be built into here um, that could most likely last about a year in power. And the best news is we will have a USB. So if you want to charge it through your computer at any time with the little hookup just like that, that can come out right here um, next to the adjustable uh, collar here, you can. And you can charge it. And guess what? Nobody's going to stop you. This is my seventh time recording this video because my dog's barking. Which means they're about to bark probably. So I'm going to end this because this is going too well. But it'd go even better if you can go out and help me build the next smart collar that is going to help people training. And not only that, stop their dogs from barking. Because who doesn't want their dog not to bark unless needed? And that's the other thing you can think about. With the open platform, you can control how long until you can, you know, send those vibrations to your dog. So not just a single vibrate, but after about two to eight seconds, maybe start sending the pulses and again, the strength that you'd like. I'm Lance and hopefully you'll be using one of my callers soon.